Thailand is officially the first country I visited outside Europe and Middle East, and boy did I miss a lot. I took a flight from cold, snowy Europe to the sunny, exotic Thailand, or as it's also known, Land of the Smiles. Throughout my visit, which lasted around 15 days, I lost track of time. Days fused together, there was so much to explore, so much to see, and so much to do. I did expect to have a culture shock and to be taken to a total different reality from what I'm used to, and my expectations were not disappointed. Thailand is a land of contrast, both in socio-economic sense as well as architectural and topographics. From the tall skyscrapers and nightclubs of Bangkok to different historic temples scattered around the country, particularly in the north, to the world-class amazing islands and beaches of the south. It's safe to say Thailand is one of my favorite destinations so far and has won a special place in my heart. There is so much to see and so much to explore, so let's get started. We will start off with Bangkok. Although Bangkok is mostly known for its bars, rooftops, amazing nightlife, as well as night food markets which will guarantee that you will never go hungry, and the famous BTS train system inside the city, it too has a lot to offer in terms of culture. I will be focusing on the two places which left me with the most impressions. This is the Grand Palace and the Mahanachon Tower. In case I butchered the name of the tower, please forgive me. The Grand Palace. As you're walking towards the Grand Palace, there will be a sea of locals and tourists going in. It's impossible to miss. I picked my ticket and a brochure and went inside. The whole experience from the moment you enter is simply mesmerizing. The palace itself was built when the capital of Thailand changed from a city 80 kilometers north of Bangkok to Bangkok itself. The palace complex is huge, spanning just shy of 20,000 square meters. It is divided into four courts, the outer court, the middle court, the inner court and the temple of the Emerald Buddha. Although for me personally it all felt like one big maze and I couldn't tell the difference. The construction of the palace began in May 1782, by the orders of King Rama I. Subsequently, different dynasties and kings lived in the palace, with each subsequent king changing a bit in the palace to what he saw fit. Today the palace does not contain the king's residency anymore, as it has been moved to another location. The palace not only plays a historical significance, but also a religious one, as Buddhist temples and symbolism are visible everywhere.
Next stop, the Emerald Buddha. For foreigners, this is just another beautiful building, but for locals, it holds a special religious significance. To enter the complex, you need to take off your shoes and walk around the complex in line before going inside. Inside the complex, there is a giant Buddha statue. Although the rule of taking pictures of Buddha are not that strict anymore, this was one of the places where you are not allowed to film inside, because it truly has a religious significance of the people of Thailand, as you will see the large number of Thai people entering and conducting their religious rituals. What I found the most impressive are the murals on the interior walls of the complex, which tell an epic called Ramakian. It is one of Thailand's national epics. Honestly, I'm not gonna bullshit you and say that I knew the story or had much interest to read about it on the site under 30 degrees sun, but I did do so afterwards. A super short version is Rama is set to become king but his jealous stepmother sends him and his wife Sida and his brother Laksham into exile. A demon then kidnaps his wife in hopes of marrying her. When Rama finds out, he gathers a large army and with his brother goes to fight the demon. Rama wins and is crowned king. Of course, the story is much deeper than that, but that's a short summary. The full epic is depicted on the interior walls of the palace and it can literally take you several hours to fully appreciate it. Finally, a worthy mention is the Wat Pho Temple Complex. It is located a walking distance from the Grand Palace. Wat Pho Temple Complex is one of Bangkok's oldest temples. It existed before Bangkok was even established as a city. The complex is recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Site. The site itself has many different temples with different depictions of Buddha, with the most famous one being the Reclining Buddha. The reclining Buddha spans 46 meters long. To fully appreciate the complex you need 2-3 to three hours, but after the Grand Palace I was pretty tired and only spent half the time there. Next up, the Maha Nakhon Tower, which is a tall skyscraper with a rooftop view over the whole city of Bangkok. Designed by a German architect, the tower stands at around 314 meters tall. So after buying the tickets, you are taken up in one-of-a-kind, colorful, trippy elevator experience. Upon exiting the elevator, first you have a full floor with a 360 degree view of the city, as well as seats and other fun activities to do.
As you proceed further upwards, right before the rooftop, there is a very cool restaurant which needs to be booked beforehand, with the prices actually being very reasonable. And finally, the rooftop itself. From here, you get an unfiltered 360 degree view of the city. Honestly, I could have spent here the whole day. Bangkok is a city of 10 million. From here, everything looks so tiny. Busy people commuting, BTS trains, cars moving. From up here, the city looks like a big ant colony. Not to get too philosophical, but you realize how small we are. And I truly got to experience a sense of awe and wonder. There is also a cafe and a small section with glass floor where you have to wear a special foot protection to walk on. Once you step on it, you can see the city transparently underneath you. Next stop was the sunny island of Phuket. Phuket is a big island and one can easily spend one to two months to fully discover it. There are many cities on the island with each having something special about it. For me personally I decided to stay two nights in each city on the western coast of Phuket including Patong, Karon and Kata and to visit the beaches of each respective city. In addition, I took a tour to Fifi Island and visited one of many elephant sanctuaries in Phuket. My first day was in Patong, which is perhaps the city with the highest tourist density. Patong is a party city, with Bangala Road being its main attraction. The place is cool during the day, but at night it gets wild, with loud music, bars, clubs and tons of restaurants to choose from. Regarding the beaches, and speaking as someone who spent his childhood next to one, I'll say this. At least on the western coast of Phuket, you can't go wrong. Beaches simply range from good to very good, with Patong being perhaps the most crowded. But that by no means means that it is any less good than the other beaches. Usually the southern you go to cities like Karon or Kata, the less crowded it gets. Now for the best views and the best tropical experience, there is a Freedom Beach, which is a small secluded beach south of Patong. The beach looks really nice and has some of the best views in Phuket. However, to reach it, you will need a boat ride from Patong Beach itself. 
because Freedom Beach has become something sort of a well-known secret, it has become more and more crowded in recent times. As for me, my favorite beaches in Phuket were Karon and Kata beaches which are beaches of small cities south of Patong. These cities are less crowded and more family friendly. The beaches are long and sandy and the water is also clear. If you care more about beaches than partying, you might consider spending a few days in those two cities. From Patong I took a tour to Elephant Sanctuary. Although I didn't know what to expect, the experience was truly amazing and not something you do every day. The full trip was very well organized as you get picked from your hotel and taken to the sanctuary. There are always concerns online regarding how those elephants are treated, but from what I saw they were treated pretty well. There are different types of tours from full day to half day. I took the half day tour. I took a half day tour, which allowed me to prepare food for the elephants, feed the elephants, interact with elephants, as well as bath the elephants. The bathing part was a bit messy, but a truly unforgettable experience. The tickets to such sanctuaries are a bit pricey, but the proceeds go to maintaining the wildlife and protecting the elephants. The last, but certainly not the least, is the Fifi Island Tour. Personally, although the tour spans only one day, it felt like the activities were made for at least two days, meaning you get to see and experience a lot. First, we were taken to a small island called Koh Hanok. We started on this island, which is in my opinion one of the most beautiful islands and beaches I have ever seen. You get to spend there around two hours, swimming, snorkeling and enjoying the beach. It is truly an amazing beach. The water was crystal clear and you have coral reefs on one part of the island which allows you to have an amazing snorkeling experience. Next time I'm gonna spend a full day just on this island. Then you will be taken to Fifi Island itself. 
There you'll spend one hour. You can either eat at the restaurant or climb to the top of the mountain overlooking the island. After that, you'll be taken to various locations on the island itself or technically around the island. This includes Maya Beach and Monkey's Cave, as well as other lagoons around the island.